good morning year six and it's mrs mehedi back here again this is the final english lesson for this week so we are going to be writing paragraphs three and paragraphs four today it is possibly the most difficult english lesson of the week so it might take a little bit longer and you might need to re-watch some of the other videos and certainly this one as we are planning it so started with the pictures again what we are describing is the sinking of the titanic and when we get to paragraph three we're looking at this part we're describing it sinking we're describing the chaos and then we're describing it being gone as good writers what we always need to do is read what we have written so far and this is where it takes a little bit longer if you don't read your writing first you won't know what you've not written yet and it's all got to link and be cohesive so we've got paragraph one hits the iceberg which we've written paragraph two you go away and you realize that the lifeboats aren't full paragraph three which we're doing today describe the sinking and paragraph four shorter paragraph bits what happens afterwards the waiting the quiet the cold right so this was our planning for paragraph one planning for paragraph two which we've done planning for paragraph three which we are going to do today. We're going to come back to that in a minute and planning for paragraph four, which we need to add to today. So let's just read first what we have already written. My hands are shaking. I feel hot tears struggling against my eyes. I have no idea where to begin. I feel a driving need to tell everything properly, exactly as it happened. But my mind is cluttered with exhaustion, confusion and despair and grief. I am overcome by grief. At this point when you're reading you might want to add parts to yours i didn't hear the scrape of the iceberg as it glanced by the underbelly of the ship we felt it though as it awoke us from our slumber calmly families had begun to gather in the first class lounge whilst the orchestra played to the sound of families chatting casually after a short while we were ushered by an important looking man into lifeboat five i clutched my mother's hand tightly as we gingerly took our seats you could still hear the orchestra playing in the first class lounge. The calm music and mismatched soundtrack to the tension rising among those of us on the lifeboat. In contrast to the soothing sounds drifting through the frigid air, an argument between our officer and the man who loaded us onto the lifeboat set my hair on end. We slowly began to realise the severity of the situation. The lowering of the boat into the sea seemed to take an age. The ropes repeatedly stuck in the pulleys as we were hung above the glassy surface of the water below. I could see my father's concerned face staring down from above. The jolt and jerk of our downward journey finally ended in the sea. In the deep darkness of the night, it looked as black as oil, lapping against our boat gently. Whilst I looked around the lifeboat, it suddenly became clear to me that our craft was only half full. The unoccupied spaces on the benches faced up towards the star-speckled night like unmarked gravestones. A shiver ran down my spine. And then we have paragraph three. No, sorry, paragraph two. Over the next few hours, we watched the sea. Uh, sorry, over the next few hours, we watched as the great Titanic slowly listed into the sea. At first it was a gentle lean forwards, but by 2am its nose was completely submerged underwater. We could hear quite a commotion from the ship as people still aboard fought to be saved. At one point a gunshot pierced the icy air as we all sat, helplessly observing the events before us unravel. Someone on a megaphone could be heard crying out for the half-empty boats to return to the ship to fill up with the doomed souls aboard. Our officer did nothing. No one wanted to face a frenzy unfolding aboard the stricken vessel. Eventually, whoever they were, gave up. Okay, so good so far. This is where we don't want to rush and ruin our writing, so we still need to keep the concentration up, and there is so much we are going to get into paragraph three. So paragraph three, we need to describe the sinking. We're going to have some repetition in it, effective description, fronted adverbials, adverbial phrases, a reaction, the suspense of the final sinking. In our plan, we've got the repetition straight away, leaned further and further, the icy depth, that's our expected description, 
Then we've got realistic detail, exposing the big propellers as the ship loomed above the water, giant motionless triple screw propellers. We listened in horror to the groans of the ship. Then we've got the crash, the lights going out, the blackness, the screaming that emanated, that kind of echoed everywhere as the boat broke in two. Reaction, my jaw fell open. The boat being half suspended above the sea as it crashed into the waves, the screams, the funnels toppling off like skittles. And in a matter of moments, Titanic was sucked beneath the surface. She was gone. That is quite a lot to get into your final paragraph. So I thought the best way to do it would be chunking it up and doing it bit by bit. So I'll show you what we're writing, I'll show you what I've written, and then you can write something similar. This. Right, Titanic started to sink more. That's our first sentence. That's boring. So we could jazz it up a little bit with a fronted adverbial to start our paragraph at the time and describe the sinking in a little bit more detail. So let's have a look. I've got as the night went on, that's my fronted adverbial of time. Instead of saying Titanic again and again, we've already had vessel. This time my synonym is liner. So not just the liner began to sink, the great liner began to lean and here I've got my repetition began to lean further and further into the icy depths so effective description so night went on the great liner began to lean further and further into the icy depths its great hull looming ominously above the water okay so I like the description that I've got there so looming, kind of standing out, towering above the water because it was lifted ominously. That's how it was looming. Suggests that it's dangerous. Something bad is going to happen. It could collapse any minute. Above the water, exposing, and this is what we had in our plan, it's giant, motionless, triple screw propellers. So instead of Titanic started to sink more, we've added a few details, lots of description and some realistic facts in there. My next sentence, we heard it groan. So good because we're using our senses, but let's again make that a little bit better. So let's see what we've done with this one. So instead of we heard it groaned, we listened. And again, an adverbial phrase here. How did you listen? In horror. We listened in horror. Let's describe the moans. We listened in horror to the deep mechanical groans. Where did they come from? From the heart of the ship. And then I've compared them as well, like the death throes of a dying beast. Okay, so they sounded like some animal crying in immense pain. Our next sentence, we heard a crash. Well, it's back to a few sentences here. We heard a crash. The lights went out. People screamed. It broke in two. Let's see what we can do to make this a little bit better. So suddenly we heard what sort of crash? A deafening crash. Compare it again, like an explosion. And the twinkling light illuminating the ship went black. So I've combined these two sentences. I've added adjectives to the lights and I've added adjective to the crash. Suddenly we heard a deafening crash, like an explosion. And the twinkling lights illuminating the ship went black. People screamed. That's our next bit. OK, so here I've used my planning again and I've used my emanated from the boat. So screaming emanated that means echoed and got carried all across the surface of the ocean. Screaming emanated from the boat as its enormous body, which was straining under the weight of the water it had taken on, broke clean in two. So again, I've combined these two sentences. People screamed it broke in two. Screaming emanated from the boat as... So I've got a conjunction to tie them together as its enormous body. And then I've got an embedded relative clause. So I'm adding extra detail about the body here. Its enormous body broke clean in two. So my extra detail, its enormous body, which was straining under the weight of the water it had taken on, broke clean in two. So see if you can get an embedded clause in your part. So screaming echoed all around us. As the boat's body, tell me some extra detail about the body, which had taken on far too much water, 
cracked and then broke into two pieces. So can you see I can just change that a little bit and make it your own? Right, reaction. So before we describe the next part, let's have a character's reaction. My jaw fell open as the Titanic's final act unfolded before my eyes. It gives me a little introduction to the next bit. I'm going to describe the bit of sinking. This is where you might need to go back and watch the video again of it sinking towards the end. So my jaw fell open as Titanic's final act unfolded before my eyes. So this is what I need to put in my last part. So I need to describe the top of the half fell in the water. The steam funnel snapped and fell off. It turned slightly, then it went under the surface. Even as it did, it clanked and banged before it went onto the seabed. So there are all the details I've got to get in. This is how I've done them. The half of the boat suspended above the sea crashed down into the water. And then I've added a bit, bit here punctuated by waves of terrified screams. So the top half of the boat fell down, people screamed. The half of the boat suspended above the sea crashed down into the water, punctuated by waves of terrified screams. Its great steam funnels toppled into the water like skittles before it began to turn away from us as if it were hiding in shame. Then, and I've added an extra bit here in the proverbial phrase of time, then, in a matter of moments, it was pulled downwards under the surface. The clanks and bangs of the wreckage could be heard below. So a bit of passive sentence here. Could be heard below as it imploded. Sinking. I need to extend this a little bit. Sinking to the seabed. Then I think at the end of that paragraph we had a short sentence, didn't we? Clanks and bangs of the wreckage could be heard below as it imploded to the seabed, the Titanic was gone. Could have an adjective here, the mighty Titanic was gone. That's our third paragraph, done. Okay, so what we do now is read that again. I'm not going to because you can rewind it and re read it again at your leisure. Paragraph four though. I'm going to let you do this a little bit on your own. So I've got my planning here. I want to talk about that bit in the lifeboat afterwards where you're just waiting. It's cold. The screams go quiet. And that quietness is kind of spooky and eerie, probably worse than the screams. And all you could do was wait. So this is mine. And I'll highlight it as I read it, I think, today. So what it left behind was the most dreadful, I like most, most dreadful sound on now i'm going to say what the sound was the wailing of those left floating in the depths seemed to go on forever and left an impression on me that would chill me to the bone for the rest of my days some suggested rowing towards the din and pulling the stranded aboard but the others were louder semicolon in here instead we were tethered that's tied to another lifeboat, number seven. Some realistic detail here again. Dash, that tells me what lifeboat it was. Gradually, it's another front of the proverbial here. The helpless, futile, blood curdling cries fell quiet. Lots of adjectives here. Blood curdling. And we've already got this bit here. They would chill me to the bone for the rest of my days. So gradually, these crying, screaming fell quiet. The hush was deafening. So nice play on words there. When you're saying the silence was deafening, it was louder than the screams. Only the sounds of the chattering of the teeth and our breath shivering to and fro were left to fill the void. So the void's like the big empty space. All we could do now was wait. And I've left it on some ellipses. So we don't know at this point if they get picked up or not. So read that again. See if you can write a couple of sentences of your own. You're in the lifeboat. The screaming is horrific. Then it stops. The quietness is kind of worse. You're cold and all you're doing is waiting. Some of you already sent your paragraphs you've done so far. Once you've written it, I'm going to put some publishing paper as well on the website. And I would love to see your finished pieces. Okay, take care.